Well, here we go again. One more refashion from my mother-in-law's closet. All right, so a few months ago, I did a haul video with <laughs> an entire garbage bag of clothes that I took from my mother-in-law's closet because she was moving. Um, if you haven't seen that, I will link that in the card above and I will link it below as well. So the garment I'm going to be working on today is the full length black skirt that I found in her closet. Um, it was actually long enough for me, which doesn't often happen to me, especially in ready to wear garments. Um, but it's not really my style. Now, I've actually chosen to make it into something else that's not typically my style, um, a halter top. Now, I wanted it to be a dress, but it was a bit too short. <laughs> I wasn't quite comfortable with it, so it's gonna be a more tunic length um, halter top. Now, it's not that I don't like halter tops, and like that's not why I don't wear them. I don't wear them because whenever I've tried them on um, in ready-to-wear stores, they're not built for the broadness of my shoulders and the broadness of my chest. So I wind up with like this really weird shape, kind of just, it's just, it's never, it's never been flattering. So I don't wear them, but I do like the style when I see it. So I'm going to do a halter style today, which I'm excited to actually make one that fits me properly. Um, and it should be fun. So let's get started. So here is the skirt. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my seam ripper and I'm going to pick out all the stitches around that waistband. Once I've gotten that waistband completely removed, I'm going to put it off to the side because there's a chance I may use that for the neckband later on. I'm not entirely sure, so I'll keep it around just so I can reuse it if I can. Once I get that waistband off, I need to pick which seams I'm going to open for my armholes. And I've just marked on my lining fabric which one I'm opening up just so that I don't get mixed up and confused because at this point the only thing holding the skirt together is the zipper. So I've gone down and opened up about 15 inches on both sides where I want my armholes to be. Now it's time to make them armhole shaped. So <laughs> I tried it on and I measured where I actually want the bottom of my armhole to be. Um, so I'm going to have to stitch that back up to that point a little bit, but that's okay. I just needed enough opened up so that I could try it on properly and not just try and guess. I'm using a design curve here to get my armhole shape, but if you have an old shirt pattern lying around, you can use the armhole from that to mark out your armhole. Once I've marked that, I make sure that my main fabric and my lining fabric are lined up perfectly. And then I'm just gonna throw a few pins on either side of that line just to hold everything nice and steady. Once that's done, I can just cut on the line. Then I'm gonna re repeat the same procedure on the other side to get the back side of my armhole. Now I'm going to stitch up the bottom seam just up to where the armhole is going to start. Now, the next thing I need to do is transfer those armhole cuts onto the other side so I can get both arms through the dress. So all I'm doing is I've taken a piece of my fabric that I cut off from the first side and I'm pinning that onto the second side. And this is going to be my guideline that I'm going to cut against. Here I have my armholes pinned with my fashion fabric and my lining right sides together. And I'm just going to stitch that around. Now you can see right here, this is where the zipper is and it's holding my lining and my main fabric together. That started to really get in the way. So I just went through and I stitch picked the lining off. Um, so I'm gonna have to go back later and put that on, but I did end up removing that seam. Now here I've got my armhole seam all stitched out and I'm just gonna go around and clip the edges. Once that's done, I need to under stitch that seam. So I've got my seam allowance for the armhole seam and I'm going to press that over to the lining side. And then I'm gonna run a scant 16th of an inch seam just along the edge of my lining fabric. And that is going to make it so that the fabric doesn't roll out and you don't see the lining on the outside of the garment. And there we go, it gives a really nice finish with no top stitching. I'm gonna try and avoid top stitching on this garment throughout. The next thing I needed to do was I needed to just double check um, where everything needed to go. Do I need to put in some darts? Um, how is everything going to hang? So, um, because, because basically in this skirt where the butt was is now where my shoulders are and um, 
it kind of, I mean, anatomy is what it is. So I need to take up some bulk in some areas just to give the shirt a nice drape. Once I've marked all of my darts where I pinned them, I'm just going through with my chalk, making sure that I give myself a line to follow, and then I'll take out any excess that I need to in the dress. One more time, I needed to try it on and make sure that I was gonna be okay with where I was going to join the front and the back of the armholes, as well as marking where I needed the front of the neck line to come down to. Once I have my neckline marked, I'm going to fold my garment in half, holding the underarm seams together. And I'm just doing this so that I can mark that neckline height on both sides and make sure that they are equal. Once I have those measured out, I need to actually create that neckline. So I'm going to use my design curve, not in like any real particular way that there's a rule about it. Um, I'm just using it so that there's a bit of a curve to that neckline. I'm going to mark one half of that neckline and then I'll use that half to mark off the rest. Once I've got that cut, I'm just gonna once again fold my garment in half, holding the side seams together, and just make sure that they wound up the same length. Everything looks good, so now it's time to turn the garment inside out and finish that seam. Once I have that stitched together, I'm going to clip the corners before I turn it right side out. From the back, I'm going to once again understitch my seam allowance onto the lining fabric. I'm not going to be able to get right into those corners, but I will do as much as I can. This is just so that my seams lay nice and perfectly folded without my lining fabric rolling out. All right, once that's done, it's time to uh, go back and deal with this zipper. Now, I need my lining fabric to once again be attached to my fashion fabric. And in order to do that, I'm going to line up the raw edge of my lining fabric with the um, back edge of my zipper tape. Now I'm going to run a stitch using my zipper foot. There we go, zippers all back in. Now I can deal with the seams on the back collar on either side of the zipper. Because of that zipper, when I fold the garment inside out, I'm gonna have to deal with half at a time, like either side of the zipper at a time. Um, because the rest of the garment is sort of tucked inside each side, if that makes sense. So I've got my one side here, I've got everything pinned. I'm gonna go and stitch that out. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing that I did to the front. I'm gonna clip those corners. I'm gonna turn it right side out again. And as much as I can, once again, I'm gonna understitch that seam allowance to my lining. And then I will repeat the same thing on the other side of the zipper. Now that that's all done, I need to actually um, put my front of my armhole and the back of my armhole together. So as I've been avoiding top stitching this whole garment just for the look of it, I am using a invisible ladder stitch and I'm just stitching together three quarters of an inch um, from the edge of both the front and back armhole that will not be seen at all. And then once I've done that ladder stitch on the top of the fabric, I'm gonna flip it inside out and I'm going to do sort of a stronger reinforced stitch on the underside in the lining. So it's gonna be strong. I don't have to worry about this coming apart, but it's gonna be completely invisible and just look like both sides of my dress are sort of butted up against each other. The very last thing I have to do is put a skirt hook at the top of the zipper, just to make sure my zipper's not sliding down on me. And once that's on, I'm done. Well, here we go. I've 
fun top that I can wear out, I can dress it up, I can wear it with jeans and dress it down. Um, and it also is loose enough fitting that it's super comfortable. I can wear it to work where I'm jumping around and playing games with kids, but still it's just that little bit elevated. I hope you liked today's tutorial. I hope that you'll give this a try. If you do, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. That's all I have for you this week. Until next week, do all the things like share, subscribe, and I'll see you later.